where is that rider located? Um, number two is what is the rider's rating? Mm -hmm. Number three is... Hi everyone, uh, it's Jay from Interview Query and today I am joined with Chinmaya for our mock interview uh, kind of series on YouTube. And uh, Chinmaya is uh, newly uh, actually uh, PM at Microsoft. Uh, he joined from uh, Smith's College uh, in the AI program and is now uh, doing data science uh, product management work um, for Microsoft uh, coming out next week, I believe. Uh, and so, Shinmaya, I'd love to just first kind of like get a sense of your background um, and tell the audience kind of how you uh, got into data science and uh, uh, kind of like why you're, you were interested in it. Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. Um, I kind of stumbled on your interview query on when I was studying for my interviews at Microsoft. So it was, yeah. it's come Perfect. full circle. <laughs> uh, so it's great to like, you know, look back and say, oh, wow, like I've learned a lot enough to be here. Uh, so thanks, thanks for having me. Um, my background, I, I did my undergrad at U of T in University of Toronto, for those who are not familiar with it, in business administration. Uh, like had kind of data on my mind, um, never left me. I, I was always like curious about it, how it worked, where it could be used and how we could make better decisions with it. Mm -hmm. um, which led me like a, down a very like winding path, I would say. Uh, first into like brand management, then product management and product marketing, and then finally kind of landed up at uh, Queen's University at the Smith School of Business and the uh, AI program, where I've been like trying to take all the things that I've learned about data, about IT, about systems, about marketing and business, and like put them all together to make intelligent systems. Because uh, that was like the opportunity that I saw. And I, and I was hoping to land a AI or ML based uh, product management role which ended up happening. So I so really happy about like the outcome there. Uh, overall, I'm like, just really excited about what this field has to offer. I think we've barely like, begun to tap into what's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as important as the technical skills are, I've learned that there's a, a lot of business context that data scientists need to think about. And many times that uh, model just is, is, just the, is just scratching the surface the real solution is often like, how does it solve a problem for the end users? Um, so that's kind of like where I wanna keep growing and uh, take my skills. Awesome, yeah, and I think that uh, is definitely encapsulated uh, more and more um, also in the interview process uh, as you see more interviews kind of geared towards uh, how you can think uh, about the nuances within each problem um, and you're not just you know building a uh, you know model to, um, code out your laptop and then deploy and just, you know, forget about it sort of a thing. Uh, and so uh, segueing into this actual uh, mock interview. So today I'd love to talk about a problem uh, that is asked at Uber. And so uh, it's modeling based. And so the uh, question at hand is uh, you're tasked with building a model to predict if a driver on Uber will accept a ride request or not. Uh, and so how would you go about uh, building this model? and what kind of features would you use? Uh, what model would you uh, select uh, and so on? Cool. So Uber wants, just to clarify the question. So Uber wants to know uh, whether a person will accept a ride or not. And we want to build a model to predict that. Yes. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, just give me two minutes. I'm going to do something that I like doing during interviews because I think it's like a neat trick. Yes. Uh, so let me just start sharing my iPad screen. I find that this is like a, a virtual whiteboard in COVID times <laughs> that I would normally have <laughs> in a real interview. Okay. So we're looking at um, we're we're looking specifically at the driver angle, not at the rider angle, right? Yeah. And so uh, if you imagine how Uber works, uh, yeah. we have, you know, the drivers uh, and the riders and the riders make uh, requests to yeah. get rides. And then I guess Uber sends out um, general requests to each driver uh, within a certain area or radius to see if they accept right. the request. So the driver gets a request. And do you know, like, what the driver is shown? or an Uber driver is shown about a rider and the kind of information that they give, they're given to make that split second decision? 
Uh, let's say that as the company, um, this is a feature that you can customize, right? And so uh, we can show a lot more information or we can show uh, almost no information. Um, I think uh, depending upon also there is uh, like a monetary, like this is how much it might, uh, you'll get from it. Um, and I think that is uh, something that they also use to incentivize riders uh, to drivers to accept the request or not. Okay, interesting. So the way that I'm kind of like thinking through this is that there's like three buckets uh, of, of information that's shown to a driver about a rider. Okay. One is like, there's a lot of info. The second one is there's some info and the third is lots of info. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the, the reason that I'm kind of doing this, maybe, I don't know what the circle is, but anyway, I will ignore it for now. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to do here is, uh, I'm trying to just get an understanding of the Uber business and the kind of the user experience that a driver has with a rider. Um, so I'm asking these kind of questions to determine whether, because I'm, I'm kind of thinking through this as the driver has to make a split second decision especially when they're like taking when they're either completing an existing trip or they're on a trip and about to end that's kind of like the two points um so maybe if i like model this out a little bit more yeah the driver essentially has either they choose to new so i'm going to say like driver new trip new trip so they either decide at the end of their current ride current ride or um, middle of their existing one or like late in the game. Okay. So given that, I think what's, what's usually, I'm, as I'm kind of like brainstorming, um, if they're shown the distance, so that, that would actually be the first one to like to say okay well distance to next rider mm -hmm. then of course if you show that and if it's small then they're likely to accept so that would be one of the features that i would kind of start thinking about as i'm starting this modeling exercise so uh before i mean i know we're tr what we're trying to do is get into the model but the first step that I'm trying to follow, understand is the user journey. The second one that I want to do is actually the exploratory data analysis piece. Okay. To actually understand the relationships between data points that Uber may have uh, today about their driver mm -hmm. or their rider and what the relationships between those features are. So okay. there's distance. And then there's also, so there's actually two kind of distance data points. We have distance to next rider from the driver's current position. And then you would have distance, uh, let's say trip, um, trip distance. That's kind of like the two main areas that I'm thinking. How, did, how does that sound? Like, am I missing anything on the distance piece that uh, you think I should be thinking about? Yeah, so I think that's uh, kind of a great way to frame it because there are, um, kind of like uh, trip characteristics, right? And these right. are the distance, trip distance. And then um, there can be other things uh, such as uh, the general, um, I think we mentioned this before, like the price that you get from the trip, um, you know, like how long this trip might take, I guess that's a function of the distance. And then just kind of like uh, what time, you know, you're taking this trip right now, uh, you know, if it's mm -hmm. like, 12 a.m. versus, um, you know, like, I don't know, 3 p.m. or something at rush hour. Uh, and so these are all kind of like uh, characteristics of this one entity. Um, and then there's also, I think, this, you know, multi-sided marketplace. We have like the driver side and then also um, potentially, you know, the user information that you uh, put at the top as well. Right, right. Yeah, because I think the multi-sided marketplace brings up something that I didn't think about yet, which was 
this idea of, and I don't know if Uber does this today, but picking up uh, Uber Eats orders on the way if they're taking a driver or they're just ending a trip, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that is true. We could probably scope that down um, to right. just the Uber driver marketplace. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so log out of that. Cool. So the two main buckets I think that you highlighted, which are really, which we just kind of like briefly discussed are, so if I kind of like think of a characteristics um, high level umbrella, and then break that down into, okay, so there's kind of trip, there's rider, there's, oh yeah, of course, there's driver as well. Mm -hmm. So the driver itself, themselves, or it, him, him or herself will have their own kind of propensity yeah. uh, to accept rides or not accept rides based on certain time of day or number of rides that they kind of, they've done in their shift maybe, or even like how much money they've made um, throughout the entire week or whatever time span we choose to look at. Yep. So if, they, if this driver is coming off like an eight hour shift, they're not gonna do another ride. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's trip, rider, driver, and oh, of course, how could we forget traffic? Traffic. <laughs> So traffic is a, <laughs> I feel like it, that, that's how most decisions will be made in large cities. It's like, is it, is it like 5 p.m.? So if it's 5 p.m., it's like, I'm not doing any, that's it for me. Um, yeah. And especially like traffic would, um, I think traffic is kind of related, but not directly. I think there's like some indirect relationship between traffic and special events. Um, this is, of course, like pre-COVID times. Mm -hmm. Uh, and special events. So I'm thinking surge pricing during, let's say, like your favorite basketball game or hockey game or uh, even like whatever sporting event or whatever event. It could be anything. Yep. Um, so traffic is likely to spike up, but at the same time, surge is going to go up. So people are, so even if there's a special event at like, you know, that's ending at 5 p.m. Even though there, there's a lot of traffic, people might be on the road because there's a bunch of people that are requesting rides. Um, the, the other thing, yep. Characteristics of like a trip potentially, like uh, I guess the trip yeah. that you take, the traffic would almost be like factored into it kind of special events as well. Um, so either, maybe not at this kind of dimensionality, but like in general, I think at some point they could all roll up under um, uh, kind of like a trip, uh, in a sense, and because, uh, yeah, I think the rider has its own information. The driver has its own kind of information about themselves. They have ratings, riders have ratings, and then a trip could then just have like a potential, potentially its own rating too, right? From like one to 10 of how like great this trip is versus like how horrible this trip might actually be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually a good point. I'm going to put it down but it's something that I'd like to visit later on. Okay. Uh, because if we start thinking about quality of trip, then it, that itself is honestly a model to yeah. predict, to like regress it or classify a trip um, based on like certain factors, we would actually need to do a deeper dive, deeper dive into that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but another big thing is actually like, and this is something that I don't think many people would think about, but it's a uh, vehicle condition. Hmm. So, or uh, actually not even vehicle condition, I'm going to say vehicle itself. And, and I'll like kind of explain a little bit more. So one of the use cases that I'm thinking about is uh, I'm, I'm kind of out like, you know, pre-COVID, uh, I've had a decent day at work. I have a couple, like I have some energy left over and I want to pick up a few riders. But likely what's going to happen is um, I'm going to do this like, closer to 10 no sorry either closer to like 10 when people decide to head out and i'll pick them up to drop them off at the club or whatever they're going or wherever whatever venue that they want to attend and then most likely i'm going to be out on the road either around midnight or 1 a.m again but i can own but the number of riders or number of rides is actually linked to the type of car that i have um so i, I couldn't really pick up you know a party 
mm -hmm. if I if I only have a car or if I only yep. have Cooper. Um, I can only pick up two or three people. But if the car that I have is in the garage or like my van, my extra van um, is in the garage, then I can't use that. That's number one. Number two is I'm unlikely to, if I have a second car, I'm unlikely to actually use the van um, during regular drop-offs when it's like one driver or two driver interaction, two rider interactions. Uh -huh. um, I'm likely to use my regular car for that kind of. So what I'm saying is that the vehicle type and the vehicle condition would affect the driver's ability to accept certain trips. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. May. Actually, may. I'm not deterministic. <laughs> Everything is probabilistic at this point. Um, I think that's a good like starting point. What do you think? Uh, is there yeah. any other characteristic that you would want? Um, no, that, I think that those think are missed? good. I think these entities are uh, kind of like good features. I think we have like the main ones uh, in the center uh, with the yeah. trip rider driver. And then we have these uh, kind of special conditions that matter a lot towards the yeah. actual degree of the model. Um, yeah. I think those are good because they're pointed out. Cool. So once I get an understanding of these things, and, and of course I can like spend ages going into each of these characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's like in within vehicle, there's some items that I would think about like vehicle type, number of passengers the vehicle can, can hold the last time it was, it was repaired maybe, um, the vehicle's overall condition itself, meaning yeah, I don't know if Uber does this right now, but I don't know if it, it, it usually asks drivers at the point of signing up. I, I think I remember when I was a driver at one point that they asked me, what is, how, how old is your vehicle? And when has it last been serviced? Mm -hmm. So uh, picking, picking up or asking uh, drivers to give more updates on a vehicle's condition may be beneficial to predict the outcome for something like this. Gotcha. Um, around trip, I would look at, there's like this, again, this giant umbrella of quality of trip, but within that there's items like time of day, uh, trip distance, the, uh, uh, the potential revenue that the driver can afford to earn from this trip. Oh, uh, I keep getting, this, this, isn't, this doesn't happen normally, but um, I keep getting, yeah. So you have a lot of different items about a trip, then you have riders. So uh, from the rider angle, the first one is where is that rider located? Um, number two is what is the rider's rating? Mm -hmm. Number three is uh, how many how many riders is it? Because it's not just one request. And as we've talked about, the vehicle type will affect whether that Uber driver is able to pick up that that passenger or not. Yep. Um, then the other like on the rider side, I would again look at uh, time time of day, and also like neighborhood so many times i think rider drivers may be hesitant to pick up certain riders based on where they are and it's unconscious i don't think it's like sometimes it is conscious but i'm, I'm going to chalk it up to unconscious bias where mm. you know if there's like a sketchy neighborhood or yeah. if if it's like deep into entertainment district at two two or three in the morning that rider is likely to be you know out of it or yeah. <laughs> might cause unneeded distress to the driver. So they may like sway away from that. Yep. On the driver side, the, the most obvious is like, how often does this driver actually accept rider requests? Okay. Very, very simply. Uh, yep. The second one would be, what is the driver's rating? Um, because, and, and also, is there a link between rider quality and driver quality? Um, and I, I'd be kind of curious to see if Uber's already kind of figured something out there where they suggest certain high quality riders to, to specific high quality drivers and whether that rating itself uh, has a factor in who's recommended to the driver. Um, because that may actually, they, that may have a very uh, highly correlated effect on the driver being saying yes or saying no because of like kind of the previous like mental history that they've built with Uber or the relationship that they have. Yep. Uh, traffic, so time of day, again. So time of day kind of comes into both the trip and the traffic aspect that we just talked about. That's mm -hmm. why we have the, the line. Um, the other thing is uh, sometimes, uh, and, I, and I'd be kind of curious to see what this looks like, but 
right now, I think Uber connects to Google Maps API to, to actually select the route. Yeah. But traffic patterns are usually best when they're crowdsourced like from Waze. So I'd be curious to see if there was if there was an uptick on the driver's ability or driver's like propensity to pick to accept rides in high traffic times if we switch to Waze. That'd be like a fun experiment to kind of understand. But I know it's away from the central problem. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would want to look at is traffic based on a uh, rider pickup and drop off locations. Some sometimes, tra- I mean, traffic is is random, so it's not gonna it's it's random, but it's also sort of predictable. You're not gonna take large streets during rush hour. You yep. could take side streets and still get to the place that you want to get to if there's a side route access or side route path. Um, so that that would be again like, is there an alternate route based on the driver's location, the rider's location, and the rider's drop off point? Gotcha. And if yes, during a traffic time, that may that may actually, and if we show that to the driver when they're picking whether to accept a rider or not, then it may influence the decision to say yes or no. Mm-hmm. So just that's a that's an angle. Uh, special events, uh, of course, this is like uh, very. It would be it could be very categorical, like special event, special event one, two, three, four, and then there could be kind of uh, attributes associated with each of those categories. And I'm guessing we can bring a lot of those attributes into this model that we want to build or into the initial sample data set that we want to create. Okay. Um, Does that all make sense? Any questions? I know I said a lot of different things about these characteristics piece. I think that makes sense. Um, I think one problem that we might have to think about is let's say that we have general like missing data for some of these aspects right let's say um new writers you know new drivers we don't have any yeah. information on right so is there any way that we can correct for that given that it's probably like you know a big aspect of our model is just the historical acceptance rate from drivers in the past or uh kind of like data on the writer itself yeah yeah so so essentially what you're saying is how do we deal with null values right yeah so yeah, there's a couple of ways. I mean, the I'm guessing we've done like Uber has probably done some form of like clustering or unsupervised learning on on this data set. So uh-huh. they might have a like a intuition about what a driver's profile looks like based on like age or the information that they provide during sign up. Yeah, um, we could probably pull uh, like the median or the mean from those profiles and populate them into these null values at the beginning just yep. to get like a feel and these would of course come from the actual clusters that that have already been built and i'm assuming this if we don't have that and that assumption is not valid then i think um probably giving them as i said like a mean value not from a cluster but from the from the given like column or feature would be good enough, but you you would need to know that that's those like new sets of users would be part of another cohort, and that we could potentially, if we don't have data from before, we could start doing a much more closer detailed cohort analysis on this new group of drivers um, that you know may have joined uh, like even now. So you could take a look at a cohort of pre-COVID drivers, and you could take a look at post-COVID drivers or intra-COVID drivers. Mm-hmm. And intra-COVID drivers are more are much more likely to behave very differently than any of the pre-COVID drivers were. Um, yeah. Most more likely, they're they're going to take special events. <laughs> this is great because this links back to my earlier point. Special events like a pandemic directly affect have a direct effect on whether a driver is going to accept a rider because if the does the has a rider worn a mask in the past, is the rider wearing a mask now? Um, what is their safety rating? Like, have they kind of abided by some of the principles or the guidelines that the government has set up? Things yep. of that nature. And I don't know if Uber is collecting data on that now, but this exercise would probably start that questioning uh, if it hasn't already. Uh, gotcha. Cool. No, I think that's a great um, 
point. I think uh, on that note as well, I think for many drivers um, thinking about their like acquisition uh, to like Uber is also kind of important because a lot of the times I know in the past they've done incentive programs based on how many drives that they do or rides that they do. And I think um, like on that point that kind of uh, may help with like the cold start problem as well in terms of being able to give them extra data on uh, this, you know, driver has to do five rides by the end of today. And so maybe you'd be more incentivized to uh, finish the ride at that point. Makes sense. Um, yeah, and so for the next part, so we have all these features, we have this data. Um, well, how do we start building the model? Uh, what kind of like process goes in terms of like the model selection uh, portion of this? Uh, and then how do we then evaluate our model? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, the way that the question is worded, uh, it's, it's quite obviously like a classification problem where you want to say good drive, like, yeah, accept. Uh, the, the question would be accept or not accept. Yeah. So then you could put people into one of those two buckets. Um, but of course, the more nuanced version would be like a more multi-class model, multi-class system where you have like very likely to accept to not at all likely to accept. And you have like a spectrum of classes in the middle. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I would stay away from regressive or regression because I wonder what the score or the Y value would be. Uh, you have essentially a lot of features, but I mean, you could pull out a probability of accepting from a logistic regression um, based on like the class that they select. So like we can, we can set an arbitrary th threshold as well. And that, that the classes would actually kind of determine that where, yep let's say 70, the, the obvious number is 50, but likely it's going to be like, let's say if they're above 70% probable, then they're likely to accept the ride. And if they're less than 70, well, they're not going to, and then you could break it up. But I think a logistic regression would be honestly the best first start. Um, we're not as, I'm guessing the model's performance matters more in this scenario than the feature understanding. Um, okay. and, and here's why. The logistic regression would kind of kill those two birds with one stone. You would, you would do the exploratory data analysis first, and mm -hmm. you would throw the sample data set in and into a logistic regression, tune it. But then you could always look back and see what features drove their prob drove probability of accepting or not accepting the most. So that would, that would give you a, like a, a direct understanding of your data, but then an indirect understanding by digging back into the model's results. Mm -hmm. um, so log would be the first. And then I would start playing around with, once I have like a, I'm guessing this initial data set is gonna have like 50 to 70 features. Uh, we wanna trim that down as fast as possible because it's gonna take too long otherwise. Uh, and likely there's gonna be data leakage and high, co high like, Collinear, not collinearity, but like highly correlated features. Yep. Uh, so once we get that down, uh, another like cool model to check out would be uh, decision trees. Because decision trees kind of open up this other like broad swath of, of models uh, and ensemble methods that we could kind of try out like XGBoost, uh, AdaBoost, uh, even like random forest as well. But of yep. course, those then when, once you start going to those like uh, less explainable things, it becomes harder uh, to to know which features are kind of uh, contributing to the score. So that's where I would start on the roadmap wise. Understand okay. the data a little bit more with the model that I'm trying to build. Build the model, tune it, and then start playing around with ensembles. Um, because ensembles is where you can actually really increase the model's ability to classify a driver uh, as negative, as as likely to accept or not likely to accept. Cool. Uh, one other angle, and I think this is like often missed in more academic settings, is how are we going to get labeled data? Um, and mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd be kind of curious to see if 
if there's already a score that Uber has, a probabilistic score that Uber has about their driver and their willingness to accept um, that they may be already built, that we can use as ground truth value. But essentially, that would be a big problem to solve before we got to the modeler. OK. Yeah, so let's say um, you know the kind of like the feature and how it works is that uh, you're driving um, and then you get a ride request, uh, right? And then you can accept it or not accept it, right? And so yeah. many times in that scenario, we would have you know people that have accepted it, people that have said like no, or people that just like it, it basically just timed out, right, from inaction essentially. And mm -hmm. so um, we could assume that's no. Uh, potentially, you know, within their system, someone else might have accepted it when they also wanted to accept it, right? And so, um, I mean, given this kind of like labeled data set, uh, does that kind of inform more of what kind of model would be built or how we might evaluate the model? 